and Jalen's 33 day recap. The second Birdmester. Welcome to Bill and Jalen's 33 day recap. Welcome this is back. part four Welcome of the back. second Birdmester. So, part four of the second Birdmester. Welcome back. We were counting down the teams from 30 to 1, power ranking style. Uh, through 67 days or whatever. And if you don't like Larry, we don't like you. Yeah, we don't like you either. So we're down in the top 12. If you want to see teams 30 through 13, uh, go on to YouTube, watch part three. Why Here's, haven't they already watched it? Well, they probably have. If you're not subscribing right now to Grandland, if you're not su subscribing to the BS report, to the Rose report with Jacoby, what type of sports are you watching on the daily? I'm I'm looking out for the people who, are, who hit the vape and they're watching it out of secrets. They don't know part <laughs> four. Then they watch part one. They don't know what's going on. Uh, all right. And why is he wearing a Boogie Cousins jersey? Because he's the MVP of the league. That's why. All right. He brought to the most of the table. We decided. Yes, indeed. Talent, stats, off-court incidents. You know what we're going to do? Weirdness. Yeah, we're getting Boogie on. No, we're going to go to Sacramento and sit courtside for a Sacramento Kings game to cheer for Boogie. That's what needs to happen. I'm so ready. <laughs> I can't wait to do that. Where can we go? We're going to do that. Oh, that's, that's great. That's a good one. That'd be tough to get tickets there. They actually, people, people <laughs> like, just no, wrong. no, 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 seriously, they sell out every game. <laughs> okay. We'd have to call in a favor. I mean, we All could go sit courtside in Milwaukee. We could go and get tickets probably outside for five bucks. Do you realize for the rest of the season, you could pay $99 and get tickets to the Milwaukee Bucks games for the rest of the year? Right. So if you're a basketball fan and you want to see your favorite team, just pull up the buck schedule. And for an extra $30, Larry Sanders will watch your pets. Ah, <laughs> oh, too soon. Come on, guys. Come on. Uh. <laughs> and by the way, he broke his hand in a bar fight, and he's a big dude. He's tough out there. And on got the court. in a, a locker room argument with Gary Neal last weekend. Did you read that? Hey, but don't give up. Gary Neal said, I know I'm earning my money. It's like, you are? I've been watching Bucks games. Let's Nobody's see, earning money. I'm glad you brought that up. And I'm glad that actually happened in the media. Mm. Players always argue with one another. Right. And the culture of a locker room is, I can say whatever to you and you don't take it personal. Yep. So if you got a knot on the side of your head, if you got bad teeth, if you got bad skin, right. whatever it is about you, I can say it. I'm your teammate. And you're allowed to say something just as mean back to me. But Gary Neal... Cross one line, Bill. Brought up money. Stay out my pockets. Yeah. Keep your hand out my pockets. I didn't get this money because I earned it. I had the leverage to negotiate it. Right. And now all of a sudden it makes me, like you, pull up Gary Neal's stats and say, Larry Sanders didn't get your money. Green got your money for the San Antonio Spurs. Okay. The other now they're they, arguing about money. It's not going to end well. <laughs> not going to end well. There's some there's some laws in the NBA locker room. Pay your card debts right away. Yes. Right. Twenty four hour maximum. Guys if, making millions. I shouldn't have to ask you multiple times about my bread. If if somebody has a girl, you then don't go after that girl at least for like a year. You could talk to anybody in the world, but just don't mess with the other teammates. Yeah. Significant others or ex. Yeah. Can't do that. What about somebody that they dated for like three weeks? Well, you, that, do you have to wait like a year? Well, you know, like your jersey, is that league property? <laughs> That's something totally different. That's another conversation for okay. another day. Another conversation. Yep. Uh, another thing, no insulting uh, that involves salaries. Correct. It's bad. Yeah. yeah. It's professional basketball. Like, everybody that you see traveling with a team yeah. is under contract. You're all on the same team. Everyone's <laughs> trying to make as much money as possible. <laughs> Correct. You don't point out the flaws <laughs> of salaries. Okay. Correct. All right, so our top 12. This group is called the Fool's Gold Diggers. <laughs> <laughs> they're chasing Fool's Gold, and they're digging for it. And the, this group includes Washington. Toronto and Dallas. Dallas is the best of those three teams, but they're in a no-win conference. Um, Washington, I think Washington's pretty talented. How about this? When you watch Washington, don't you think like, oh, that I team's kind of talented. I do. And watching a lot of these rosters made me think of this. Rick Carlisle's really good, really good coach. That's why when we did the preview, <laughs> okay. remember when we did the preview and I picked up for the playoffs and we argued about it, I was like, I got Rick Carlisle. He can't not go 500. It's impossible. I, I don't recognize Monte Ellis. 
He's actually playing within a team it's concept. Amazing. How about winning with De- DeJuan Blair as your center? Yes. He's got no knee ligaments. He, 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 like, he's playing elbows in boxes, yeah. shots in transition, pick and rolls with Dirk, so Dirk can do catch and shoots. It's been like easy money for Dirk. Here's how I knew Rick Carlisle was a great coach. I was watching a game. Vince got knocked down, and he got up within three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he got up off the court. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I knew Rick Carlisle had something special. Because if he had one of these other rosters like we talk about no. with a lot of these teams, they'd be in a different position. I forget. It's like Bear Bryant or somebody said this about – he did in the Southern accent, but it's like he coach, he coach his, he beats your guys, he coach yours, he he beats your – you know, was, I forget. It's some Southern lingo thing, but they always say that about Belichick. Uh-huh. I think you said that about Rick Carlisle. I agree. Like if you gave him the Cleveland Cavaliers right now, they would be like – 30 and 17. He, he really Now, that would be impossible, actually, because they haven't played enough games. But and you know so, what I mean? So, for fool's goal, we got Washington, Toronto, who's been playing good basketball. After they got they they cut out the Rudy Hemroid. They were talking about how they had less ball movement with Rudy Gay. They were one of the worst offensive half-court efficiency teams. He took a lot of shots. With Rudy Wood, the ball just stuck. You know what it is? It's so easy to understand if you've ever played basketball at any point in your life. You're on these – when you're playing pickup or something, you're on a team with a guy who chucks it all the time, and everybody just kind of loses the will to live a little bit. You don't want to play as hard because you're like, ah, this guy's just going to shoot again. And then finally you're playing the game. It's 9-8. to eight. At first it was 9-8-6. to eight, six. Everyone's you fighting come, hard. You're fighting back. You're getting you cheering. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then so really, I get an all-long outlet. You kick it to that guy, and he just take a one-pass jumper. 20-footer. Nobody's and underneath. Uh, now we gotta get a stop. Me. Oh my god! It's <laughs> then you start thinking about throwing the game so you can pick a new team. I think that might be Rudy. No, Gay. you run back on the court, be like, "Who got? Oh, yeah, who hey, hey, oh, oh, we lose this. I got <laughs> hold me a spot." <laughs> so anyway, they somehow and Kyle Lowry's balling. What? Kyle Lowry might be on my my All Star team of guys who just should be paid by the year. J.R. Smith's a shooting guard yes. on the team. But the thing about Kyle Lowry, and I think this distinguished him from players like Courtney Lee, who he just got traded for, mm. and uh, Jared Bayless, because to me those— Well, Kyle Lowry is much better than those but, guys. But they, they were all in the same melting pot to me, and DJ Augustine as well. Like combination guards in this right. league, they were trying to figure if they could really play one, can they play two, you know, can they get a ten, be a 10 assist guy, or they, are they a scoring guard? He distinguished himself as a legitimate scoring guard. And has had real moments in yes. the NBA. The issue with him is that off the court, he rubs people the wrong way for whatever reason. You've had three teams gave up on him. Right. And uh, no, two teams or three? Memphis, Houston. I guess Toronto would have been three. But it, yeah, it'd something be about him by, like is annoying to be around. And so uh, for that dynamic of the Raptors, I remember they were trying to be a player for Wiggins, who's also – a Canadian kid. Well, that's why they traded gay. And then look what happens. They start, they start winning. Games. They start kicking butts. So that's why they're in the, the area you call. Because they might get, diggers. they probably are the number three seed. Picture that. They're going to be the number three seed. I just heard it. No way. First of all, control room, keep quiet. We're trying to do a podcast. <laughs> we want to hear your opinions. We'd invite you in. Um, no, I think Toronto could be a three seed. They will not be a three seed. Who's your three seed? They're going to make sure that they break up their team so they're not a three seed. I oh, think, you think they're going to tank? Well, they have to make some move, and it's going to be with Lowry. You talked about the player. I think they. I, I think their fans would be furious if they did I that. I think you talked about the player. I wouldn't be surprised if the three seed is Washington or Detroit. Well, I think Washington is. I'm going with my Pistons. Stop it. The East. Stop it. The East. Please. That Atlanta had it with Horford. I, I'm. I really like Mo Cheeks. I met him in Oklahoma City. He was a great guy. I love talking basketball with him. He might not be an NBA head coach. You got to have a plan get, that you stick to game to game. Guys, you know this more than anyone. You're an NBA coach. Guys need to go to the arena and know how many minutes they're playing and who they're playing with. You can't just change that every game. Mike Brown does the same thing. Well, it's kind of like you need a, to know mm, what's going to happen mm. when you get there. You mean like a relationship? So, so yeah, I like to watch football on Sunday, sun up to sundown. Right. And all of a sudden, you get married. Are you able to watch football from sun up to sundown uninterrupted? 
as you probably were able well, to do. Well, I am because I get it's well, it's my job. <laughs> but I still I still take crap for it. See? <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, t- to your point though, your your girl knows that you watch football on Sundays. Mm-hmm. If on a Sunday you just disappeared for the entire day and didn't explain it, she'd be like, Well, that's weird. I feel like that's how Mo Cheeks coaches kind no, of it's like, like oh, I'm not time. playing in the second half. What? I but I played the second half the last game. No, it's like it's like that every time I put on something half decent. Like, where are you going? <laughs> like, I can't take a shower and put on something half decent. I can't dress like a bum My every day. Does the same thing. Why you look so nice? Oh, <laughs> uh, because I'm going on television. <laughs> it's, it's a film. It's a video medium. <laughs> the next group is the wild card. It includes one team, the Phoenix Suns, who are 20 and 12. The Vegas over under was 19 and a half. They were the 30, number 30, 30 team. No, they were 29. They were 29 or 30 in our NBA preview. Um, they have already exceeded their Vegas over-under with 50 games to go. That is terrific. And they're now, legit. They're now, a legit good team. Them, so many first-year coaches, and I know Brad Greatest. has been talked a lot about. Atlanta's coach has been talked a lot Uden about. Uden And nobody's really talking about Jeff Hornacek. How about the Philly guy? Th- those guys are doing an amazing job. We talk those a lot four. about coaching turnarounds and turnover. Those guys are doing a real good job. And Jeff Hornacek, you know, what he's done with that roster, you got guys playing above themselves. Shannon Way Fry, above. Well, the other thing, I like, they have a style, and he sticks to it. And I That's went to that Clipper game, and it was clear that he told them before the game, run. You, you get a rebound we're going. They score, run anyway. And they were just, boom, down the floor with those two guards. And he told them, Jamal Crawford sucks on defense. Whoever he's guarding, you attack him immediately. They did it. Jamal Crawford was out of the game by the second quarter. Like, he didn't know what was going on. But it, it was, I was really impressed. I, and I, I'm impressed with the Twins, too. Yeah, the Twins. I, they were kind of, there wasn't great buzz about them well, well, they off came, the court. They, they came out of Philly. You know, they, they're a little shaky, though, well, right? They, well, well they, they're from a, a tough background. Right. And so when you're around that consistently, you know, that maturity of being an NBA player now allows you to remove yourself and have the opportunity to grow up. The thing I like about both of them is that they embrace, you know, their brotherhood. You know, so many times you have sibling rivalries and things of that nature. But I like a lot of their tattoos are absolutely the same. Like they want to mirror one another. And I think it has to help them when they're playing basketball, at least somewhat. And when they're trading girlfriends. (laughs) That would be awesome. (laughs) You know what I admire about the twins? They figured out a way to compliment each other on a basketball court. I don't, and I don't even know who's who. One of them can play post up underneath, and the other guy's kind of like a Marcus play in the and Markeith. Pre- Markeith's underneath a little bit more, mm-hmm. right? Marcus is a little bit outside, but when they play, they're effective. And also, when you're running back in transition, playing basketball, it's a four on three, and everybody's scrambling. One of the things that makes that separates a college player from a pro player is you have to be able to decipher everything about that player immediately. Mm. It's almost like. That that scouting report has to come in your head. He's a catch and shooter. He's a forty percent three point shooter. He likes to be yep. the driver. He likes to post up. So just them being twins has to throw you off some. Totally, hundred <laughs> percent. And also, um, it made me think like the Grants were probably the best twins ever. And I don't and think Horace. they're getting top. Those guys, their games would have complemented each other, and they never played together. And they don't look alike. They don't. But Harvey was more outside. Horace was inside. Yep. And I wonder, like, when you're twins, when you're growing up, because the Kentucky guys are like that too, right? Mm-hmm. Harrison, one is a point guard, the other is a yep. shooting Andrew guard. Andrew and Aaron, yeah. So it must be like when you're eight, they must they must shoot. All right, I'm going to be the point guard, you be the two guard. That is so awesome. And then they go. But uh, I love watching Phoenix. I hope to make a trade. Our next group, the One Trade Away Club. It's just the Clippers and the Rockets. I'm not ready to cross these teams off yet. I can just tell you that right now. They cannot make round three with the teams they have. They need to make a trade. I agree. With the current rosters, not happening. I agree. Um, for Houston, Ashik, that's the elephant they in the room. They got to turn Ashik into something. They have to parlay that into something. For the Clippers, power forward minutes. Big man. P- their version of P.J. Brown in 2008. Yes. Against a lot of average... Or good teams in today's game, you could get away with playing Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes, 
Dudley at the four. Hold on, Steven Jackson. You think this is the last day of his contract? They're not going to bring him back? He, I actually know. I have some inside info on it. Okay. They couldn't afford to feed him anymore. <laughs> when you're eating 19 meals a day, it just gets tough. Like he is, The other guys didn't get to eat. He he is the fattest veteran I've ever seen. <laughs> Everyone in our section was talking about he had a full fledged pot belly. Really? So you're a professional athlete. <laughs> there's playing themselves, playing yourself into shape, and then there's it's too late. I can't. All right, so now I gotta defend my voice. Of course, Jackson. I knew you would. That's why we I do our defend thing. My voice. That's why we give my the people what we want. Team guy. That's why we give the people what they want. When they signed him, they knew he was 270 pounds. He did a physical. He showed up and worked out, did whatever they asked him to do. Right. He was still recording his records, mm. doing shows. Cooking. And all of that. So when they signed him, they probably felt like we're going to help him work to get himself into shape. They did it with Lamar Odom last year. Yeah, that worked so out So maybe they're looking to do that. So the Lamar Odom's a great I like the league with Steven Jackson's in it. We I need to get Richard Hamilton back in the league, too. I love Steven Jackson. I really wanted it to work, and I think one of the reasons they got him was because then they were going to trade Matt Barnes, right? Because you feel like Steven Jackson is now your wing guy slash muscle, they just, make three guy. He's just too old. They need a guy that's taller than Dudley, taller well, than Jackson, Dudley's the taller elephant, than Barnes. Dudley's the elephant in the room here. To play four. Because we love Jared Dudley, great guy. Um, I like following him on Twitter. I root for him. I thought he was great in the Suns. He's been bad this year. And they traded Bledsoe for him. They really miss Bledsoe's defense. Really miss it. Because Jamal Crawford's not guarding anybody. J.J. Reddick's okay. Chris doesn't want to play defense really hard 82 games a year. Bledsoe was a great stopgap defense but, guy for But them. see, one, one thing that you have when you've got Chris Paul, though, is the last two minutes of the game in the West, I understand Tony Parker and the Spurs. I understand OKC. But they're just as good, depending on what day it is, as Golden State or Houston. I think Golden State's a little better. Or Portland. Because Golden State at least has the Iguodala defense advantage and Bogut a little bit too. I just think they could, they're – as Steve Crow always says, you got to get stops as the rounds go along. I don't think the Clippers can get stops. If I had to rank the teams <laughs> – That's what I we're would, doing. I, I would – but no, but you're going by you, – you know, you're going by one trade away. That's oh, yeah, for, the, for Houston versus the Clippers, right. I mean. So I do think the Clippers need a trade to be better on paper than Golden State. I'll tell you who they need to trade, but I don't think there's a market for him is Jamal Crawford. I don't think they could trade Jamal Crawford. I don't think, I don't think any other – because only a contender would want him, and I don't think any of the contenders have the piece to give back. Let me tell you the one thing he can do that nobody else on that team consistently does, that get his own shot. Chris Paul has to get shots for every other player on the roster. But here's the thing. You could you could easily replace his minutes with JJ Reddick and Willie Green. You couldn't. You could though. How how I'm would saying they if it came shots. What hurts them more? Ryan Hollins or the downgrade from Jamal Crawford to ten more minutes of of uh JJ Reddick and then fifteen minutes of Willie Green. They in building this team built players that we're specialists. Yeah, but I think they built the team wrong. I think they have too many shooters. Correct. Like so, Then they went out and they got Mullins and Jamison. Everybody yes. in this team plays 25 feet from the basket. Correct. So if that's the case, you need one guy that can put the ball on the floor and get his own shot. And Jamal Crawford's one of the best in the entire league at doing it. He's the one guy that can get them, besides Blake or Chris, that can jump up and get them 20 points and a half. My problem is their crunch time lineup is Chris, Jamal, Dudley, or Barnes. Blake and DeAndre, you're not getting past round two with that. So we it is not. We agree that with home court advantage on paper, the Clippers. Well, they're not getting they're not getting home court advantage in any series now because of this Chris Paul injury. Along they will be a six seven seed. Clips in Houston, one move away. I do think at this point the Golden State Warriors have surpassed the Clippers to go with Chris Paul. Well, that's our next group. I'm glad you brought them up, Jalen. The Golden State Warriors are sleeper. the number six team. I had given up on this team. I thought they were all offense, no defense. Iguodala came back. 
they they got hot on the East Coast. They've ripped off nine straight as of this taping. That might end by the time you watch this. But um, they got six really good guys. And then Draymond Green, uh, kudos to him. I mentioned that he was – I said they were six and a half, and I, I said a few weeks ago that Draymond Green, well, he, he can get hot. He's been a good bench guy. If he's your eighth or ninth man, you're fine. They're still a guy short, though. They missed that Jack guy. The thing that Golden State is able to do is all of their players, number one, change ends of the floor. Yep. Them and Portland got four or five players that constantly can be on four on threes, yep. two on ones, three Boom. on twos. And when you got all guys running the court, all of a sudden, there's Clay for three. All of a sudden, Lillard's walking into a three. All of a sudden, there's Batum. There's Wesley Matthews. That's where you get the quality three-point shots, either in transition or off offensive rebounds. And, you know, and I don't I don't totally trust Clay, and I don't totally trust Harrison Barnes, obviously. But those guys, like one of the – in a playoff series, you play seven times. They get two hot Clay Thompson games and one hot Harrison Barnes game out of the seven, right? Two things that never get discussed when people talk about the Golden State Warriors, and big shout to my good friend Mark Jackson. He's doing a great job with the team. One – That's not what you said in the green room. <laughs> One is the toughness of Andrew Bogut. Right. Real toughness. He'll fight. <laughs> Real he's, not, tough. he's not a hold me back. Correct. The toughness of Andrew Bogut. He's their consistent seven-footer that has to play anchor down low, rebound block shots, and defend the other team's bigs. That's, that's tough work. And David Lee, you say what you want to say about his defense. I pick up the stat sheet after every game. He's 19 and 10. And the defensive possession isn't over till somebody grabs the rebound. They go to Miami, Steph Curry, David Lee, 30 points each. Mm. Both of those guys will be all-stars this year. Same with Lillard, same with Aldridge. That's why these teams are sleeping. Steph Curry, and who's going to be an all-star? David Lee. No, he's not going to be an all-star. Yes, he is. No, no, no. They're going by no. bigs, not no. by position. No. Come on. It's front court. He's not making the all-star team. It's front court. He's not making the all-star I'm about to tell you the guys then. All right, let's bet. Lobster tempura. Done and done. I'll tell, done. I'll tell you the teams. So OKC is going to have KD, possibly Ibaka. If, if David Lee makes it over Ibaka. That's the spot. That's why I pointed I'm out. I'm protesting. It's Ibaka. It's going to be Ibaka or Lee. Come on. Abaka's going to make it. It's going to be interesting to see what the coaches vote. Well, if Abaka makes it, we know Amina's going to go to New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get fired. We might work with somebody who has a slight little crush on Abaka. Just a little bit. Just a platonic crush. <laughs> we all have crushes on people. Um, all right, so let's go to number five, four, three, and two. The Contenders. The contenders. Basically, everybody who's not Miami. Everybody so, we haven't named yet. Indiana, Oklahoma City, Portland, San Antonio. Done, done. San Antonio done. is just out of there, out of respect. Well, I haven't liked their performance against good teams this year. Me, either. I don't like the Spurs the way a lot of other people do, and and I say that because a lot of people think they're going to win the West. I do not think they're going to win the West. I'm sticking by them only because they burn me year after year after year. I thought Kawhi was going to get better this year. I'm disappointed. I, think, I had high expectations for Kawhi. I think, and this he's is the same. He's not. He didn't get worse. I'm just saying. I think his opportunity stayed the same. Or you don't think they gave him more? I think he's playing. Remember, there's been games this year that he's come off the bench. I know. Well, you know what? The other thing I was thinking in the finals because they had to bury Tiago. So they're playing Duncan at five, Kawhi at four, and that's when he was getting all those rebounds, and that's when he emerged. Maybe he's not a three. Maybe he's a four. Maybe he's, he's a stretch four. He's a three. No, I know he's a three, but maybe that's when he thrives the most, when he's Kind of like Harrison ball. Burns did. Exactly. When David Lee went out. Exactly. But that was also a tempo thing and a matchup thing. Right. More so than I think. Uh, so maybe that's why he got those stats. But I, his opportunity hasn't increased. Like, it's not like he's playing a lot more minutes, getting a lot more shots. I think Pop, every two weeks, should have the game where they're like, hey, guys, we're, we're going to get Kawhi off in this game. Yes. Trying to get Kawhi to 30 points. I, what, what happens in those scenarios, and mark my words, later in the season, that's going to happen. Because That'd gonna, be smart. He's going to look at his team and say, hmm, Tony's playing well. We're getting the good stuff out of him. Got to save Manu a little bit. You know, got to save Tim a little bit. Tiago's going to be coming back from injury. Uh 
let Kawhi do his thing. To be smart. Oklahoma City, so tough to predict anything with them to Westbrook. Westbrook. Yeah. yeah. But we'll say the young guys on the road make me nervous, though. But you got to give them credit. Jackson has turned into a player that now people think can go on to be a starting point guard. They've turned him into an asset. He's Bobby Jackson 2.0 for me. Yep. What Bobby Jackson did on those Kings teams, OG that's Bobby what he Jackson. is. Yeah, you. Oh, what are the odds you're going to have a – I bet you have a history <laughs> with Bobby Jackson. <laughs> have you been to Bobby Jackson's house in the last three years? I have not, but I've seen him. He's coaching with the Sacramento Kings, okay. and he's doing his thing. But you've been to Mo Peterson's house in the last three years. I have. Mo Big P- shot, Mo. <laughs> Pizzle! <laughs> uh and the last thing I want to say about Oklahoma City is I want to come back in my next life as Jeremy Lamb on this team. Jeremy, just stand over there, and you're going to get wide open threes five times a game. 40%. Yeah. We need you to make down 40 You're not going to no. take a shot that has a hand in your face for seven months. That's a good gig. Yeah, that's a great gig. Adam's and you know what? good he, minutes, too. He plays hard, too. He I'm going to say I like him more than I thought I would. I wouldn't trade James Harden for him and Steven Adams. Of but, course you wouldn't. Um but I, I like how competitive he is. Did you see that play when he almost broke his neck, jumping over people's back for that rebound? That's what I was going to say. He he's mixes a badass. Yep. Yeah. He, he's willing to mix it up. I like yeah, that about him. I like that, too. When you look at his demeanor, you would think that he'd play a little timid, but mm-hmm. he doesn't play like that. He he really he willing to stick his nose in there. If you're Portland, would you trade C.J. McCollum for one more piece? I would because we've become a great team with Autumn. He could be an asset. In you a got Mo of- Williams in that spot. I don't think you can play Mo Williams and C.J. McCollum together. Either. I'm not willing to rule it out. I want to see it. But I, that team, to me, if if Matthews and Batum aren't in the game, it becomes it becomes mass in, mass in the house. Yes. Like Too Deion Waiters is like. Yeah, straight to the post. Yeah. So any team they play that has guards, like even like somebody like Manu, I feel like could torture those guys. And when you're a scorer on the wing and you like six five or above, mm. and they put a small guy on you, you like this is six quick points. That's the first thing you're thinking. So that's what Deion Wade was thinking. I'm two for five. I'm, oh, they got Mo Williams on me. I'm about to go to the block real quick. I was thinking McCollum for Shumpert would make sense if Shumpert was playing better. I like that move. Shumpert's a classic case of you're overrated because you're playing a big city guy. And that will. Be that's the move. type of guy they need mm-hmm. for that like eighth, ninth man. I like Portland. I, I've been on the bandwagon all season. I, they're really fun to watch. Aldridge's been playing great. Lillard. How about this stat? Oakland. Nobody has made more threes than Damian Lillard. An assassin. Yes. Thank indeed. you, Billy King. Yes, indeed. Right. Can we call Billy King Uncle Billy? Can Can you rewind? How they got Damian Lillard? Just for the fans of, just so the fans will know. Brooklyn decided they wanted to trade Gerald Wallace or for Gerald Wallace, who is an expiring contract. Is he playing this year? He's playing this year in the Celtics. Oh, okay. He's an expiring contract to, I guess, make Darren Williams happy. Oh, okay. Acquire Gerald Wallace. He's okay. They gave him forty million dollars for four years. They Keep only, getting them checks, Gerald. They only put you a know top, you my guy. <laughs> they only put a top three protection on the pick, because they said later that they only like three guys in the draft. But the pick ends up being number how, six. How about how about you just protect the top ten? How about this? To be safe. How do you how do you know in February that you only like three guys? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> right. We haven't even had the tournament yet. <laughs> and Lillard comes in. Now their defense would be we wouldn't have taken him anyway. Well, maybe we would take an Andre Drummond. He would have looked nice in that team. Yeah. Terrible trade. Anyway, Damian Lillard, that three, what was the game when he took? He pulled up and took the 30-foot three to Cavs. tie the game? The Cavs game? You knew he was going to shoot it, but not from where he was. And then he just shot it from 30, made it, and did the turnaround. Yeah, because when he shot one earlier in the year at home and made it, he shot this one for a little bit further. Right. So how about the skill set of these young players? Like, the reason why I never like to compare players with errors mm. is – Right now, for the youngsters, if they go look up Bob Cousy's highlights or the Big O's highlights, like they're this, probably yeah. looking at the ground while they're dribbling. Yeah. Or it's probably right-hand dominant. And as the game continues to pro- progress, the skill level pro- progresses. Yes. Damian Lillard, Steph Curry, these guys between the leg, behind the back, split a screen, and shoot a three. And, and it's an accurate shot. You played against Mark Price, right? I did. He was so one Mark of the Price, players, yes. I think, was the guy. Somebody's written about this. Mark Price was the first guy to split the screen. He was. And now people like Curry and Lillard do it in ways that I kind of never thought were possible, that human beings could make that decision so fast, slice between two guys, almost like watching a running back it's cut a through new, a corner. It, it's a new move that I've seen a couple of guards do. I've seen Steph do it. Um, Kyrie does it. Kyrie does this too. 
Jamal Crawford actually is able to do this. Mm. It's if you're a right-hand dribbler and you're on the left side, you stick out that right foot and that right elbow like you're about to go around the pick, and you either whip it behind your wet back or whip it back between your legs. And that move actually then allows you to unlock the floor faster because it opens up your shoulder quicker. Right. So normally if you do a split, it's, oh, and my back is turned a little bit. But if you do that half little step and you, uh, you're still looking at the floor. The skill set these guys play with, Steph is doing left-hand passes accurate across the floor. So is Damian Lillard. So Portland's for real. They're for real. And I'd like to see them do one thing. That's Terry Stotts is the coach of the year. I think. Yeah, uh, he has to be in that conversation. Hornacek would be my number two. And I'm glad that we're talking about contenders, San Antonio, Oklahoma City, and Indiana. Like, everybody knows they're contenders. But I'm glad that Golden State and Portland are now in this conversation. Indiana um, has been the best team, but I cannot make them the favorite because I still feel like the road goes through LeBron. It just does. Of course, I mean. Until somebody beats him. Right. They're the favorites. To be you. Our number one team is uh, Miami, it's, the right. favorite. It's, it's Boogie, then LeBron. Right. In that order. Right. It Boogie's our most be Boogie is our most favorite player. No, Boogie's MFP. the MVP of the NBA. <laughs> no, he's our MFP. <laughs> okay. Most favorite player. Uh, Indiana, what if Granger doesn't show anything? that makes you think he could play 20 minutes a game in the playoffs in the next month? Do you trade that contract? I really like Danny Granger. He's in the last year of his contract. Two things Indiana have to watch for is he's a player you developed into an all-star. You did the same with Paul George. You did the same with Roy Herbert. You're doing the same in developing Lance Stevenson. Now he gets injured on your watch. You rehab him. You get him back. You work him back in last year. You get eliminated. He's not 100%. Try to work him back in this year. He's hurt at the beginning of the year. He's coming back, play some good minutes, has some good moments, but not really okay. game-changing moments. Yeah, he's been okay. The problem you have now is if you don't move him and somebody still comes to overpay him this summer and you lose him for nothing. Well, I think that's I think that's going to happen anyway because so, they need to get that money to Lance. So if that's the case, then you have to find a way to move him. And if you're going to move him, I don't think that they could get a guy like this. It's got to be an expiring contract. But you talked about them, the Clippers moving Jamal Crawford. I wouldn't move him. But if he played for Indiana, right, that would be ideal. What if it was a Jordan Crawford? Or Jordan Crawford. But the problem is he's not as good. Right. No, he's not as good. But I'm saying, like, could you do the Chris Humphreys, Jordan Crawford for Granger? Now you get a heat check guy. But they're gonna I don't even need know that why guy. the Celtics would do that. But they're going to need that guy to finish games. Oh, that's a problem. And that's the whole thing. And remember, they need— they See, they're screwed because they, they can't take on the contract because they have to pay Lance. Right, and rightfully so. So anybody they have to get, like, for instance, oh, Rodney Stuckey's an expiring. That's a perfect example of a player that— But you need well Rodney Stuckey. Detroit, I would like to see him stay in Detroit, but I really like him in Indiana as well. Rodney Stuckey's been— Really kind of sneaky, <laughs> effective this year. Let me tell you one. He's been like their crunch time scorer. And, and, and he looks like 50 Cent. Yeah. One, one, one of the things I appreciate about Stucky's game is he was going against um, Chandler Parsons, who's 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, right. He's clearly five inches taller than Roddy Stucky. Yeah. Posted him up like he was 5'11". Turn around, score him three straight times. I think Rodney Stucky could have a 2009 Ben Gordon moment on a playoff team if he's playing like he did this year. So, so you think that when he scores, do they play in the club? <laughs> go, 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 go. Uh, uh, um. So I think the Clippers should keep Jamal, but if I'm Indiana, I'm eyeing a player like Rodney Stuckey. Hmm. Miami, this is their team. They're just, I think they've conceded the one seed in their heads. They're fine with it. They're going to get the two seed. They want to get 64 games out of Wade. Make gotta, sure he's healthy. I got to do something that the national media never does. Okay. I want to get on my soapbox about oh. Chris Bosh. You're going to get on You're gonna get your soapbox? About Chris Bosh. Okay, let's hear it. We know that they have LeBron, the MVP of the league. Mm -hmm. We know they have Dwayne Wade, who when he's healthy this year, they're winning basically at an 80% clip. Yep. But sometimes he's flash, 
Sometimes it's flashes because he's going to pick and choose games, and rightfully so. They want to keep him healthy for the playoffs. The steady behind LeBron James is Chris Bosh. And what makes him the steady is he's their only consistent interior performer. So some nights he got to play four, and some nights he's got to play five. He's shooting perimeter shots. He's making threes. He's on the boards. He's been consistent. I like the way he's playing, too. He's an all-star. He's definitely an all-star. And he also validated his move from Toronto with people saying, oh, he just going to ride LeBron's coattail and get a ring. No. Actually, he's balling. And he's playing at a high level. They need his production. You haven't seen a consistent Beasley. You haven't seen much consistently out of bird, man. You were happy Beasley got a haircut. I was. You uh, thought there was a – you think there's been a commitment to professionalism. Well, I'm going to tell you Beasley. how that – I've been in these You're not against that haircut. You're oh, just no. saying, like, you got to fit in the culture of the team. At one point, Beasley was rocking half braids, half fro. And I see <laughs> at him the same time. At the same time. That's in, not a professional look by In my standards. two chains voice right. at the same time. Right. So you go to Miami after you just got released by Phoenix – they bring you to the office, and Pat Riley or Eric Spolstra see that, and they don't say nothing to them, him on their own. They bring in somebody else like Zoe to do it. Hey, big fella. Yeah. Talk to the young fella. Make sure you tell him how we do things around here. Yeah. We don't. So have, you bring in Zoe. We don't have combination hairdos. Who's bigger than you. Yeah. Who's stronger than you. Who had a better career than you. Yeah. And has been in Miami this entire time, basically, since he retired. Yeah. And he says, hey, young fella. This is your last chance. And there's a certain professionalism we expect you to exhibit, and it includes the way your appearance is. Yeah. We don't mind doing preseason. Yeah. Open the night, make sure you cut that. Yeah. All right, big fella. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> yes, big fella. Yeah. And that's how that goes. Winning teams do things a certain way. Miami Heat have a great culture. Their exposure doesn't give enough credit. They run that thing like the mob, Bill. How many years have those guys been sitting over there? You got Eric Spolster has been there forever. Keith Askins, McAdoo, Ron Rothstein has coached the he and the WNBA right. team. He's been there forever. Okay? Yeah. So when you become a part of that family, that cohesion, that trust, is now put them in a position to be a dynasty. Well, that's why you just made the case for why LeBron's not leaving. Correct. And the the Luol Dang trade, if they sign him to an extension, that closes the door on LeBron going back there anyway. Yep. Which, Well, when they trade for him, really, it kind of does because that's Kyrie's. Right. Well, but that that, that at least allows them some sign-in trade possibilities with him. But uh, Miami's still the best team. They are. Um, LeBron's still MVP. LeBron's the MVP. Going into Naptown for a Game 7, though. We'll be there. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm allegedly not going to be there. As I quote, quote Coach Doug My wife Collins, doesn't think I'm going to be there. <laughs> My wife doesn't think I'm traveling for the Eastern Finals. Coach Collins says, what do the Heat believe if the Pacers say they want to win at home in seven? They're going to win the series in six. That's the mentality. A.K.A. the 93 Bulls. Yep. Right? That's the, the mentality. The Charles Smith season. Jalen, that's it for our second Birdmaster. <laughs> it's over. We've been going out for so long that the TV shut off. They closed it's the lights. Over. The bouncer turned the lights they off. They turned us off. Larry, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Larry. Thank Mogo, you. we miss you. Um, our audience will be back right before the trade for the uh, All Star break. Right, our third Bird- Birdmaster. We're blowing it out. And We're gonna have clips and movies, the whole thing. We're gonna really try on that one. And around the Birdmaster, maybe on the Birdmaster, we could do our draft. For All-Star Weekend. Oh, the celebrity draft. Yeah, we're the two celebrity celebrity league coaches. They're going to see Jerry Rice in primetime pick the Pro Bowl team for the NFL. That's a good idea. Wait till we pick our team for the celebrity game. I like that. How We we should have a lottery. (laughs) We should to decide who gets first pick. Uh, That's it for for that. Check us out on NBA Countdown. We're on Friday night, January 10th, and then January 24th are the next two big shows. ESPN, I think 7.30, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, check us out on Grantland, my column every Friday, NFL Playoffs, Jalen's uh, podcast, the Jalen Rose Report. Get the people Rose what Report. they want. Got to get them what they need. Hey! See you around next time.